first of all, it's great to be in front of the education committee. I used to be on that side. So now it's great to be on this side. So uh, Chairs McCrory, Chair Cur- uh, Curry, Ranking Members McCarty and Ranking Member Berthel and the esteemed members of the Education Committee. I'm Representative Tim Ack. I'm going to wear a couple of hats today because in my the job, the bill I'm looking at to strongly support is uh, raised bill uh, number 1197, Act concerning workforce development. Probably one of the most exciting bills I've seen in a while that really is going to get, I believe, um, help in our closing the uh, the open job slots in the state of Connecticut, um, because if we could start getting these young folks to get a, a either apprentice slash or intern in uh, internship ideas going in the high school level, you know, back in the day we had um, you know other courses whether it was um, our industrial arts classes to some manufacturing, just a touch uh, in, in each of our schools. And those kind of got uh, taken out sometimes. And I'll say maybe as, as somebody that was on the education committee uh, as a ranking member, some of the mandates and, you, and you, you filled your days up. I like what you have in this legislation. It says may. So schools may partner with groups outside the school system, whether it's in the Aerotech school, if you've been to the Connecticut Aerotech school, those graduates come out with a $75,000 and up career. Whether it's in healthcare, as we know, we're in dire need of those individuals uh, that to work in our in our healthcare systems like you have in section two. And in section three, we're just, we're just mentioning that you were bringing up peer educators. So getting somebody that may want to get into uh, and further themselves in working in the school districts. I mainly was going to come here and talk about Section 6, talking about the grants that would be provided. But the whole piece of legislation, to me, is is a good piece of legislation. And Section 5, dealing with the uh, apprenticeship programs and getting those people into trades. Uh, Earlier, uh, you had somebody mentioning uh, the trades and how we are woefully in need of people uh, in the trades, especially the licensed trades, um, and how if we can create a grant program like you have in Section 6. And then in Section 8, very interesting. I do some work. Uh, so in my other job, I mentioned I, I'm coming here. So I'm into trades, you know, having a small business and a sponsorship for apprenticeships, apprentices. This section that deals with the manufacturing of aerospace and having that uh, task force uh, working group that would be pro- provided for this. We have an enormous, we still have an enormous footprint in aerospace. And if you drive through South Windsor and East Harper and see all these small manufacturing companies that are hurting for those that could work in that aerospace manufacturing, dire need there. So strong support of that piece of legislation and also for supporting 6882, House House Bill 6882, uh, the Mandate Review Task Force. I think that's a good step. Uh, And really because I tell you, I think all as legislators, we've been said, stop mandating stuff. Well, tell us what to, what we could get rid of. And I've asked that to, uh, you know, su- superintendents, and I never get a list. Uh, so looking forward to uh, having that working group come on and actually say, you know, that we, you know, that th- these are the areas that we really can lighten the load up uh, for those in the uh, supervisory roles, our superintendents of schools and say, okay, this is where we can, um, can provide some support. So um, on that note, it's an honor again to be here. Um, and provide testimony on those two bills. Uh, you've got a heavy slate today. So uh, if, if you do have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. I appreciate your background in both the trades and on the education committee. Um, we heard a couple testimonies back about um, apprenticeships. I think that's the one that you referenced, um, that there's a uh, three to one ratio in certain um, trades uh, for apprenticeships uh, to employees, I guess. Um So could you talk a little bit about, you know, your experience or your background or any insight you might have on that ratio? Um, Apparently, it's something that I learned just today that there's a kind of a law restricting uh, the hiring of apprenticeship. So maybe it's not um, an education issue so much as a labor issue. Well, thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, Yeah, this legislation that you have starts to get uh, people into the trades through a pre-apprenticeship program, which that turns into an apprenticeship. What we struggle with the state of Connecticut is a barrier to to work, a barrier to jobs. Uh, There's no jobs that you can think of outside of the trades that literally says you have to limit hiring people. 
There is none. Doctors, nurses, teachers, you name it. There is no barrier to hiring except in the trades, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, pipe fitter, and there's one other where you literally have a hiring restriction. We call it ratios. It's called hiring restrictions. That your company can only hire, if you have three licensed tradespeople, one apprentice. We'd love to see this legislation move that you have in front of you and say, hey, let's get more people into trades. But then you get out of, you get to that level, you go, wait a minute, there's no jobs there. Well, the job openings are there, but because of the restrictions, they're not there. So it's something I've been working on for quite a while and uh, would hope that uh, as we look forward to, you know, good work like this, you know, workforce development's great. And we have job openings, but we have sometimes we don't have the, the ability to fill them because of laws that we have sitting on the books that takes a simple change uh, in some language and we can start filling those slots. Um, um, whether it's one of the concerns, concerns I have, and I don't want to belabor it uh, because you have just a heavy load today. Um, if we're going to reach our, our climate goals that we passed in this legislature, um, we're going to have to do it with outside workforce outside of Connecticut workforce, because we don't have the workforce. We have the opportunities for workforce because of the openings, but because of our hiring restrictions, we're not going to obtain them. And that's an HVAC, plumbing, and electrical right now. So thank you for that question, Representative. Yeah.